Welcome back to A Faith That Will Not Fail. Uh, this Lenten season, we are studying Michelle Kushat's book together. We encourage you to get it at Amazon or wherever your nearest bookstore is. And uh, today is day four, Trust Without Guarantees or Conditions. I'm Rustin. I'm Mike. I'm Tammy. And we're glad you're here with us. I, today, I found um, the complexity of today is how do we relinquish, how do we let go in the midst of suffering? Right? I think it's one thing in our lives whenever we're um, doing well, everything's going great, to have a conversation about letting go. Yeah. Um, I think it's a whole it's different easier. conversation whenever you're um, radically in the midst of suffering or somebody you love is suffering. Mm -hmm. And how do you relinquish in those moments? And uh, you know, I think one of the things we're very careful about as a community is not just having these platitudes of faith, like let go and let God. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> And, and I so let I, people be in it. Yeah. So I do caution us in this chapter that when we say the things that we're talking about and we're engaging with her, that this is not what we mean by relinquishment. We don't mean let go and let God. What we're That's talking really about is really practicing the presence of God enough to know that God has got us. Um, and that God is surrounding us and that we're in this journey with him and terrible things are still going to happen. Yeah, there's and, a duality there that, yeah. that there is pain and, there is God with us in the pain. Yeah. Um, and I truly believe that sometimes healing happens on this side of the veil and sometimes on other. And that's an important thing to name that um, we're, we are made whole and perfect in Jesus and it's not always on our time. And that's a, a challenging spot. And I think just the story that she lifted up today of, you know, God's got us. And even if he doesn't, I still believe in his presence. Yeah, and uh, like that for me, again, was a point where I'm like in a little bit of contradiction with her because yeah. I actually don't believe God never has us. I think God always has us. And I think um, I think we can be whole in our cancer. I think we can be whole in our divorce. I think we can be whole in these radically broken spaces of our lives. Um, and the l kind of the lie that we believe in is when we're going through suffering that there isn't wholeness. Hmm. Um, now it may not be the wholeness that we're looking for, right? And I think that's part of the letting go is, like I had this idea for what my marriage was gonna be, I had this idea for what kind of parent I was gonna be, I had this idea of my health, I had this, and and those things change. Yes. But the presence of God does not. The presence, that, that's his constant. That's the constant, and my capacity to be whole in all things also doesn't change. And so how do I find that wholeness in the midst of that, I think is a, a big question for me today. I mean, I, I just love the line that trust comes with conditions, right? Um, it's easy to say, you know, yeah, that we're whole and all this stuff, right? But it's like, it's hard sometimes to, to realize that God's in the midst of it when life is falling apart, right? Or when um, the prayer's not answered like we want it to be. Yeah, and you know, I've seen so many people have these crises of faith, where is God, when life begins to fall apart or the, you know, um, the things that you talked about, Rustin, were certain become uncertain, yeah. you know? And so what do we do when we're in the midst of the hard time and, and where is God in the midst of that? We're in our Job situations, you know, where is God and what do we, how do we work through those parts of our life? Yeah, I think one of the books I'm reading simultaneously with this book is a book on discipleship. And the author of that book talks about there are like these six kind of developmental stages of discipleship. Mm -hmm. And one thing she says is that most people never ma make it past the third stage. Wow. And that's because at the third stage, you mm -hmm. reach what is called, she calls the wall. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, and most of us, what she says, most of us hit the wall. And then our response to that is that we leave this thing and we go find another thing to invest our trust in yeah. okay. because we haven't like lived through it and her challenge. And I think the same challenge that Michelle's making in this as a three time cancer survivor is don't stop there. Yeah. That the richness on the other side of relinquishment, the, is even the, more. the profundity of relationship on the other side of relinquishment is, um, transformational. And so yeah. uh, she uses, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as kind of the biblical story here. And I think it's a beautiful story um, that we can engage in um, thinking through as we reach our wall. Where do we go from there? Absolutely. Well, the line, you know, what he wants from us is the one thing we struggle with the most to give our trust. Right on, man. So our um, five minute faith builder. 
We're going to make a list of all the situations and people that are causing us to lose sleep, those things that are troubling us. Write it down and then write Peter's words to Jesus from John 6, 68. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. If you're able to add the words, I trust you, God, I trust you. And in the online comments, don't put the people's names that you're having trouble with. <laughs> but instead, what I ask you to do is this. If, if there are people, if there are things that you are struggling with, in the comment section, write, I trust you. I trust God, just like Tammy said. And we'll join you in prayer with that. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow.